So in this video, we're going to look at truthy and falsy values. This is something for you to it's really important for you to understand. So try and remember these at least the falsy values, because anything that is not falsy is going to be truthy. And what I mean by that is if you have something you pass into an if statement that's not something equal to or is something greater than maybe you just have a string like an email. So we'll say test at test.com and then I pass that in here. So I want to evaluate email and then I'll just console log here. You passed in in an email and if I save that, you'll see that that runs. So this was evaluated to true or I, I should say coerced to true. If you remember, we talked about about type coercion where JavaScript implicitly changes the type. So when you pass something into an if statement, it's always going to be coerced into a Boolean. Okay, and we can even do a console log here and say Boolean and pass in email and you'll see we get true. The reason for this is that a string with anything in it is a truthy value. Okay, so it's always going to result to true. So what I want to do is paste in that we'll do the falsy values first. So let's uh, we can just we can just get rid of this and I'm going to paste these in. So there's six falsy values. And what I'm going to do is set a variable, let's say const x, and I'm going to set it to the first one, which is false. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to pass it into Boolean to see what it evaluates to. And then I'm going to uh, I'm sorry, that should be x. And then I'm going to do an if statement. So I'll say if x and then we'll say uh, console log this is we'll say this is truthy if this is true, right? And then let's say else, then we'll console log. This is falsy. If I save that, we're going to get this is falsy and false because obviously false, which is already a Boolean is going to be a Boolean false. Now zero, if I pass in zero to X, we get the same result because if we pass zero into an if statement, that's a falsy value. So we're going to get false for that. If we pass in an empty string, that's also a falsy value. That's why a lot of times like with web forms, when you're doing validation, you'll check to see if the value is there or not. So in, in it's passed in as an empty string if it's submitted as an empty web form or an empty input. All right, so an empty string null is also going to be falsy. Undefined is going to be falsy and then nan or not a number is also going to be falsy. Now anything that is not falsy is going to be truthy. So anything other than these six values right here. Um, but there are some things that are a little confusing that you might think are falsy and even even developers after like a year still forget that these are falsy. Some of these. So I'm going to paste in some of these truthy values. Like I said, everything else is not falsy, but let's try some of these. So obviously true is going to be truthy, right? If we do zero, but within a string, of course, that's truthy. Anything in a string is truthy, even a space. If I put a space here, that's truthy. But if it has nothing, then that's going to be falsy. All right. If I put false in a string, that's truthy because that's not an actual Boolean. It's a string with something in it. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it's something. Another thing that can be confusing is an empty array. If I do that, that's truthy. You might think if we say if and then an empty array, you might think that that's going to be falsy because there's nothing in it, but it's still an array. If you want to get the, the length, or, I'm sorry, if you want to check to see if there's something in an array, then you want to check the length. Same thing goes with objects. If we have just a, an empty object, that's also truthy. If we have a function that has nothing in it, that's going to be truthy as well. So this is really important for you to remember that it's going to be true unless it's one of these things right here. Now let's talk about some caveats. So I'm going to say truthy and falsy caveats. I was going to do this in a separate video, but we're only at four minutes and something. So let's say 
let's say we have a web form that's asking how many children we have and I'll create a variable to represent that so I'll say cons children equals two let's say that's what we passed in and then we want to validate the form so we're saying if children then whoops then we'll do something let's just say a console log with back ticks and we'll say you have whatever number children children and then else then we want to tell them to enter their children right the number of children so we'll console log and say please enter number of children okay um, and this is something you commonly see in web forms if a field is required so I'm going to save that we get you have two children right they passed in two pass in one you have one children Now, what do you think is going to happen if we have no children and we choose zero? Let's say it's a select field and we select zero. Well, it says, please enter number of children. Well, I have no children, so I'm selecting zero. The reason it's doing this is because zero is being evaluated here and zero is a falsy value. So you can run into some issues with this. I, I've actually seen this same issue over and over. So a solution here, one thing you could do is say is children not equal to undefined. If I do that, now it says you have zero children. Another thing I could do is run children through it, uh, not is nan. So is nan is is not a number. And what I'm saying here is, is it not not a number? If I save that, that works as well. You have zero children. If I put in three, that's going to work as well. So that's another solution you could do. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure you know what you, whatever you're passing in, make sure you know what that coerces or what that evaluates to. Now, another caveat that we see is checking for empty arrays. So maybe you have an array of blog posts and if there are no posts, you want to say like, no post to show or something like that. So let me just show you if we do const, you know, we'll just call this posts and we'll set that to an array and we'll say post one and post two. Right. And then we'll console. Uh, sorry, we want to do an if statement. So if we say if posts, then I'm just going to console log here list posts else then we'll console log no posts if I save that it says list posts so I mean in real life you'd probably list your posts in, in the Dom which will you know we're gonna get to soon but if you have no posts and save it still says list posts it doesn't say no posts I will say no posts to list it doesn't say that because an empty array is truthy, right? If we go up here, an empty array is a truthy value. So that's going to evaluate to true. So again, know what you're passing in. So what you could do here, remember we have a length property on arrays. You can see that the length is zero. If I add something in here, then it's one, okay? One, two, whatever, whatever however many is in there. So what you could do is say if post.length is greater than zero. Now, if I do that, it says no post to lists. If I go in there and I add in post one and save, now we get list posts. So if you want to check for an empty array, you want to do it like this. Now with objects, let's say check, checking for empty objects. So we'll say const and I don't know, we'll just say user equals and let's set it to say name and Brad. And then we want to check, say if user, then console log and we'll just say list user else, then we'll console log uh, no user. All right. So if I save that, we're going to get list user. Now, if I if I empty the properties and it's just an empty object, it also says list user. So you might want to check to see if there's anything in the object and doing it like this is not going to work because this is a truthy value. 
Now we can't use length directly on an object. So if I if I were to try to console log user dot length, you can see it gives me undefined. So we can't use length. What you would do, I mean, there's a few ways you could do this, but the, one of the most common things to do is to use object dot keys. And we looked at this in a past section. If we say object dot keys and we pass in our user, that will give us an array of the keys. Right. So then since that's an array, then we can call length on it and we can say if that is greater than zero or you might want to say if it's equal to zero, then you would do this. You know, you might do it the opposite way around. So let's save that. And now we get no user if there's nothing in here. If I add in a name and save now, it says list user. Now, another thing that can be confusing is using loose equality which is the double equal sign. And, and this is one of the reasons that I, I just about always use a triple equal sign. So if we were to do a console log and say false double equals zero. Okay, so we're comparing false to zero and we're getting true. And the reason for that is because zero is a falsy value and obviously so is false. So if I were to do let's say an empty string equals zero. Again, I get true. If I do null equal to undefined, I get true. So there's many cases if you're trying to compare these, you're not going to want true. So that's where the strict equality comes in. If we add another equal sign to all of these, oops then we're going to get false for all of them because this will check the type as well. Okay, um, so again, I always use triple equals, but everyone has their own preference. So those are some of the caveats that that you might run into when you're dealing with truth, truthy and false values. I don't know if caveats the right word, but some some areas of confusion. So hopefully that clears that confusion up.